Now that COVID is no longer such a threat, international borders have opened, all airlines are just waiting for you to jump on a plane and cruises boats are awaiting new passengers, many retirees start thinking, how long can I actually be overseas and still continue receiving my age pension? As anything to do with the Centrelink office, there are strict rules how traveling overseas may affect your payment of age pension or service pension received from the DVA office, Department of Veterans Affairs. So it only makes sense to understand those rules before you jump on the plane or the cruise liner to enjoy your long overdue overseas holiday. So today we are not talking about leaving Australia for good in order to live overseas. I prepared a couple of videos on that subject before, so feel free to watch Retirement and Living Overseas and Retirement Overseas and Age Pension. Today, however, we are talking about the situation when you are leaving Australia to go overseas, maybe for a trip of your lifetime, travel from one country to another, from one continent to another, to fly, to sail, to hike, to bike, whatever takes your fancy. Well, this is my dream of overseas holiday travel. But maybe you have a family overseas. For example, your kids left Australia to pursue an incredible professional career in another country. Or maybe you were born overseas and you've always wanted to revisit the country of your heritage, get to know its people and the culture. Whatever the reason for your long overseas travel, it pays to understand the rules if you are a recipient of any government retirement income, whether it is age pension or service pension or any other government benefit. My name is Catherine Isbrand from About Retirement. I'm Certified Financial Planner and you are watching About Retirement TV, the place to get all the financial information you need when preparing for retirement or if you have already retired and would like to improve your financial position either as your income or your assets or access to government benefits. You don't choose the day you enter the world and you don't choose the day you leave. It is what you do in between that makes all the difference. Anita Septimus. I love this quote and you can really apply it to almost anything we do in our lives. So now let's jump to our topic. How long can I travel overseas before it affects my age pension? Number one, travel overseas for less than six weeks. If you plan to be away from Australia for less than six weeks at the time, your age pension will not be changed and you will enjoy the full payment you are eligible for as if you were in Australia all the time. Number two, travel overseas for more than six weeks but less than 12 months. If you stay outside of Australia longer than six weeks, the government will remove your payment of pension supplement and you will be receiving the basic rate. Also, the energy supplement will stop. Both of those payments will be reinstated on your return to Australia. As you can see, unlike the common belief, you can actually be overseas for quite some time and still enjoy your government pension payments going to your bank account every fortnight. Things, however, change if you are outside of Australia for a period longer than 12 months. Number three, travel overseas for longer than 12 months, 26 weeks. If you wish to stay overseas for longer than 26 weeks, your eligibility to continue receiving your age pension payments will depend on how long you were an Australian resident between the age of 16 and age pension age. 
If you are unsure what age pension age means, watch my video Age Pension Explained, where you will understand all the basic requirements of age pension eligibility. So let's discuss the Australian residency rules. As mentioned above, your residency is based on your length of your Australian working life residency, and it is set at 35 years. Despite its name, it is not a requirement for you to be working all those 35 years. If your Australian working life residency is 35 years or longer, you can spend overseas longer than 26 weeks and your basic age pension rate will continue with no disruption. The only change could be that your payments might be made to your bank account every four weeks rather than fortnightly and you might be receiving payments in the local currency or US dollars depending on the country you are in and the agreement between Australia and that country. If you've lived here in Australia for less than 35 years, then your age pension payment rate will be proportional based on number of years of your residency here in Australia. So to make it clear, let's look at some examples of pensioners receiving full age pension payments. John, he is a single pensioner, has been living in Australia for 50 years. He is now 72. Uh, he wants to visit his daughter who moved to UK, married and has a family and a very successful career. Because John's Australian working life residency is longer than 35 years, after 26 weeks of stay in UK, his age pension will continue at the full basic age pension rate of $22,937 per annum. And now let's have a look at Stefano. He's also single and a recipient of full age pension. And his situation is very similar. All his children are in Italy, but he has been an Australian resident for a period of 20 years. Therefore, after 26 weeks in Italy, Stefano's age pension will be reduced proportionally down to $13,107 per annum. Those calculations are correct based on the full basic age pension payment of $22,937 per annum in April 2022. Number four, what happens to your pensioner concession card while you are overseas? If you leave Australia to live overseas, then your pensioner concession card will be cancelled immediately upon your departure from Australia. If, however, you leave Australia for a prolonged holiday, your pensioner concession card will stay valid up to six weeks, after which time it will be cancelled. However, it will be reissued to you automatically once back in Australia. If you don't know the benefits of that card, watch my video Pensioner Concession Card. Number five, Commonwealth Seniors Health Card. This card will also be cancelled if you are outside of Australia for longer than 19 weeks. When you return, just contact Centrelink office and advise of your income level at that time. As long as you continue receiving your income within the limit, your card will be reinstated. If you don't know income limits and benefits of Commonwealth Seniors Health Card, just watch my video Centrelink concession cards for your retirement. Number six, what to do before you leave Australia. It is recommended that you either register for a Centrelink online account via MyGov or you provide a nomination to a third party to act on your behalf and update Centrelink when needed. This could be a member of your family or your financial planner. Keep in mind that not all financial planning offices provide such support. My practice obviously does. But due to many changes that our government introduced to financial planning, and some of them are dreadfully unfair and virtually killing this profession, 
many older and very experienced financial planners left the industry, leaving many retirees with no support and advice, as younger generation is very often not equipped with sufficient knowledge or experience to deal with such issues that retirees face. Also, don't forget to update Centrelink of your income and assets before you leave to ensure that your payment is not delayed. Number seven, what to do on your return to Australia. Generally, you don't need to contact Centrelink on your return to Australia unless your payment was stopped while you were overseas and it hasn't restored automatically. Or you were required to provide reason for travel overseas and you have not provided those details to Centrelink office. Travel overseas can be great fun, but my sincere recommendation is make sure that you have provided all details Centrelink requested of you to ensure that your age pension payments will not stop. Also, ensure that you have sufficient cash backup in your bank account. And never, ever travel overseas without the travel insurance. In most cases, people think about covering their luggage or camera or other personal items. As important and dear to your heart those items could be, it is your medical cover and assistance that should be the most important, as well as cover of your cards and your travel documents. I might actually prepare a separate video on that topic as well. I hope you enjoyed our discussion about overseas travel. If so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to always be advised of a new video being presented. For more information about retirement, please visit my website aboutretirement.com.au and while you are there, sign up to my newsletter that will keep you updated with all the changes introduced in Australia that can impact your retirement. If you have a specific problem or would like to set up a private consultation, just email me to hello at aboutretirement.com.au And now my video recommendation. The first lot is about travel and retirement overseas. Two fascinating videos that can give you great ideas about different retirement options. The second lot is about recently introduced changes to your age pension payments. Enjoy and I will be speaking with you in my next video. Bye!